All right, we're back in action for game two, and because I think I shouted it out while we played ads. Once again, shout out and thank you to Cabrera for that $5 donation last game. Sorry we couldn't talk about it when I got it, because of course there was so much going on in the game. But, uh, yeah, we find ourselves in game number two in this best of three. This is still the winner's bracket for the IEM Toronto qualifiers. I also have a wonderfully intelligent Zerg player joining me on the cast today. It is Hendralisk. You mean Zombie Grub. <laughs> Yeah, Zombie Grub's got a bit of a cold. She sounds a bit funny. Yeah, my voice is a little off today. Yo, if you want to sound like Zombie Grub, all you gotta do is start every sentence with like, yo, and say literally yo. a lot. <laughs> oh my god, I'm noticing that now. I know, we tease each other about like our, our catch. Like mine is, I say granted way too much. I, I'm trying to start oh, to work that granted. out. But. Anyways, uh, let's start this intro off. Spotty here in the bottom right corner of the map. He's a red Protoss player with a funny name, Shloopy, but he's better known as Puck. And spawning in the top left is the Dancing Queen from Acer. It is the Queen of Blades too. <laughs> oh my God, so many nicknames. Oh Scarlet. I think uh, you know. The, I think most players you see dancing and it's like BM. I don't know. Whenever Scarlet does weird stuff in game, I kind of just see it as playful. I don't know. I don't know Scarlet. I'm not like her best That's friend. Kind of bias right there. <laughs> well, no, no. But what I mean, like from a fan point of view when i see her play starcraft 2 you know it looks like she's enjoying oh, okay. it you see her in the booth she's having a good time she always talks about stuff on on like interviews for like stages and winter interviews and stuff like i think most of the time you see a player slash dance you're like wow they're just being beat so up they're being spiteful and they're like yeah tackling. like oh you're so bad get out of my game for okay. scarlet i just gotta see it's like ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's like wow. i don't know yeah perhaps Anyways, in this game, the uh, opener is a little bit different this time for uh, Shloopy here, as he's taking his Nexus before Gateway. So this is pretty much the best economic opener for a Protoss player. Um, it depends what he's going to do next. Is he going to make a Gateway, or is he going to make a Forge? We're going to have to see when he goes to the wall off, which is right now. Right I mean, now. It's probably going to... I mean, technically a Forge oh. is safest, but with Puck, yes. yeah, I was going to say, Gateway seems like even more in order. Okay. So this wall off, you only need one Zealot to fully wall it off, I think. Yeah. Or if not, you can put a core behind it, whatever it is. So, uh, Scarlet's not a player who's going to open a temple, and especially since it is a cross-map spawn, it wouldn't be that effective or if Puck walled off. Anyways, um, Scarlet's opening for the same opener again, I think, which is the uh, hatch into a pool, Gaslets, of course, and into a fast third, maybe. Or if not a fast third, uh, she's going to take it um, after the queens are out. So this time the third isn't as fast. Hmm. Yo, for Puck, there's a lot of openings we've talked about for Protoss that come off the back of a Nexus first. Um, you know, of course, all-ins are always something that are, are on your mind. But personally, I would love to see him go with the Stargate opener on this one. Not for Oracles, but for Whoa, Phoenix. Oh, what is this? A fast third? You see that probe? It's rallied to the third base and to hold position there. He doesn't have the money for it though. What's he? Oh my god, this is like a Stardust opener where you take five minute third, let's say. Just get greedy as hell and caution. But this the is on two gases. I thought usually if you want to take a third that fast, you only want to be on one gas. Well, let's see if he actually throws that down. He's still spending money buying this. So maybe not. It could be a Stargate opener, as you said. I mean, my fingers are crossed on it because I do think Puck plays really well off the back of Stargates, but. Uh, at the same time, if you do open Stargate, you're gonna ask a scholar to do, you know, corrupt or muta, something that you may yeah. not want to deal with. So the timing for Scarlet's third base in this game is at five minutes, as opposed to the previous game where she took it at three thirty, let's say, or I think so, yeah. Um, so this time, you know, ninety seconds later, uh, the creep spread is gonna be a bit slowed in comparison. If, if he did want to take that third, this is like, oh. Look, the minerals are st stockpiling, or they're piling yeah. up right now. Oh, there it is. But the lanes are going to see it. No. They didn't. They oh, didn't. That was close. Oh, the Overlord's going to confirm it, though. I think Scarlet saw the probe before yeah, leaving. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so she sees She sees the third. Yeah. So Pug hit the probe where the Overlord was uh, seeing it. It's kind of not as not good for Pug. Because now Scarlet, she can decide to drop down a road turn with her Zergling speed and try to punish this fast, fast third. Or actually. Uh, well, you got to well, keep in right mind, too. This isn't like this third's going to be completely defenseless. I mean, A, you're going to have the overcharge. The advantage of having the third down sooner is that you can overcharge it faster. But also, Puck did go with the gateway opener. So it's not like he's relying purely on cannons for defense here. You know, he's going to have some Yeah, stuff but cannons would be what you want versus uh, Zerglings, I think. I well, mean, you know, the two pylon, one cannon in the middle, and then gateway. And you can't kill that with Zerglings. 
Right, but what I've got my eyes on more than that is this Twilight Council. You know, most of the time I'd say blink, but with the way he's trying to hit, sort of hidden this from the overlords, I'm kind of thinking this might be for DTs. I mean, it's, well, it's like 90% chance it's going to be blink. It's yeah, the yeah, standard, yeah. but it just yeah, seems odd it. to place it over here is all. Uh, maybe he just wants to hide it, you know, hide as much info as possible. Puck is a player who really likes to go for blink. So yeah, there's so the blink funny. research. Oh, we got a sub while this is going on, by the way. Just a small shout out to GG Solo. Thanks for that sub, man. Welcome to the family. So, um, back home, Scarlet isn't trying to go for a really fast Roach Ling attack or just mass Zerglings. Uh, she's she's she... going for the two Evos for up upgrades on the Zerglings once more and taking a faster, fast fourth. And, and fifth. A fast fifth. Whoa, <laughs> wow. it's like Tootmang or something. You know, sometimes you respond to greed with greed, right? And that's usually determined within, like, the first natural versus the first third. Not the fourth or the fifth, but. I, I guess one thing we didn't really talk about was like, Puck, yeah, he's got the means to defend this third, but he doesn't really have the means to punish her fourth or fifth. She even throws a macro hatchery. Whoa. Pendulisk, I'm smelling a lot of freaking lings. <laughs> oh, and I'm smelling a lot of stalkers. Yeah, uh, this is the problem. They're not going to work so hot versus, uh, I mean, like, okay, the fourth and the fifth is like whatever, but it's that macro hatchery that's going to be really scared. Uh huh. Yeah, so Puck's chrono boosting is blink nonstop, and he's adding seven gateways. That's that's gonna put him at nine gateways. He's not gonna have the money for this right away though. Oh, ten gateways. Is... Actually, will have the money. I take that back. He's actually pretty much saturated this nicely. Yeah, cause he opened Puck opened up with a Nexus gate and took a five thirty third. And this is very very strong um, macro opener for Protoss. You gotta consider too, like all these areas to engage in. Like the downside to Nimbus is it is a really wide open engagement no matter where you take it. So. Uh, well, Puck does have force fields. There's no way he has enough to like really make this a comfortable fight. Uh, Not unless he fights at the uh, that little choke below Scarlet's third. <laughs> yeah, Whatever maybe like down here. Old. Yeah, one ramp. This one good ramp on this map for Protoss. He just sneak a probe there to make a nexus and then recall his stalkers. That way he could uh, fight there with the nexus to buffer too. Um, Sneaking up some pylons, but at home on the defense has to keep an eye out. Um, the tricky oh, thing wow. for Scarlet is she has no vision of the main or the natural, so she doesn't know what tech Puck is no, doing. But besides you know what? I think she knows. Like I mean, like you said, yeah, yeah. Puck's a player I mean, who likes to go okay. blink. It's standard in the game right now. She's getting an infestation pit. We're going to see fungal growth. Lock those blink stalkers down. The lings are just going to swarm. Yeah, but you know, as you could, as you said, there could have been DTs. There's only one overseer, so maybe there was it's, some potential for them. Right, but it's, I think Scarlet's just taking a gamble, but it's like a safe gamble. You know, it's. A predictable just, gamble. Uh, just how you play, um, I suppose. Yeah. And the one one is already done. Puck has to recall here when the lanes come in from both sides. After the force fielding, that is. Yeah. Because you can't beat this. Oh, actually, lane. I like this watchtower. I forgot that's oh, a funnel in oh, here. Oh, that 16 lanes got trapped in that watchtower. That's, that's a pretty sick uh, spot to get trapped in. Puck actually makes pretty good use of this situation. One he's more gonna, force field, though. Yeah, he's going to another force one. field, or they're going to get free. Oh, they got free. Ah, uh, so perhaps not realizing just okay. how many you trapped After in there. Recall. <laughs> Yo, despite this crazy <laughs> wall, yeah, that recall is still necessary to go back home. Puck took a pretty oh decent God. fight, but, you know, he you're trading out... once. Right, but, yeah, exactly. Like, you're trading out sentries, stalkers, gas, heavy units for lings. These are cheap. These are expendable. You, Scarlet's going to be making thousands of these throughout the game. <laughs> thousands. Oh, yeah. Seems that way with this, uh... Well, very I mean, little she's, ant on the mini map. She's kind of just like straight up mono battling right now. I mean, <laughs> it's just been lings and nothing else. We're gonna finally have infestors coming to the uh, fray here momentarily and with plus two lings and fungal growth to lock this army down. I I I fear, I fear for Puck right now so badly. Uh huh. Well, the the one thing that Scarlet isn't doing as well as last game is the creep spread, but it's still I think gonna get past the tower before Puck can make an next big attack. Um, Zerglings are posturing near the base of Puck just to buy time. And, oh, oh my god, the Lings ran, <laughs> ran through the army. Imagine if Puck actually force gutted them. Like instantly, they could have all died. Yeah, cook them up for those uh, Archons. But whole position on the Lings over here. Puck actually manages to evacuate most of the probes. So he doesn't lose too much to this run by. Uh, but still kind of scary nonetheless. Yeah, and after Scarlet saw the Archons and the Zealots, she makes Roaches since uh, you can't just rely on pure zerglings alone, especially with no spines or... So the roaches are the Whoa. support. I feel like taking a fourth is really ballsy, like I don't know if he can do this. Uh, well Hive is done, it's just... Right now Skelet's army is only roaches and zerglings, which is pretty crude as far as tech goes. Um, 
Now here she can choose to fight or oh. run the drones away to the other base and give this base up maybe to get a better position. Oh, but the infestors are out. Or one infestor. <laughs> Well, that's what I was saying, like, these have finally got the, uh, pasturing lands upgrade, so it starts, uh, becoming more of an option for her to, to deal with the blink stalkers and such, but, uh, Pac oh. does have to be careful! Yes. Uh, Force fields, where are you? Force fields, where are you? One fungal in the middle, that's good. I don't yeah, think this is a good fight. Can he recall? Where's the mothership core? Oh my god, the mothership core is nowhere near the army. But the lings are already, they're, they're actually fighting the zerglings, uh, they're fighting the zealots and the archons, so the majority of the, uh, Ling's already died off. So now they're only roaches or stalkers, so the stalkers are gonna be able to kill the roaches, no question. Oh wow, about yeah it. the roaches I forgot have no upgrades, because of course she's been investing in melee this whole time. Yeah, usually if you're going for the ultra stall, you don't need rings. The roaches are just there to uh, buffer and make sure you don't get hard countered by what Puck is doing. So Puck will get this base, that's for sure. Uh Scarlet's actually gonna contest for it right away. No, it's just poking at it and seeing there's too much, so you have to back off. Yo, this is one of those situations where I'd love for Puck to like blink four stalkers from here to the natural, but I don't think he can afford to do that. He needs every stalker in the army. Harass isn't really the option right now. Mm -hmm. Nautilus, they're slowly being made right now. Both players are macroing really well. They're spending all their money. They're not floating 5,000 minerals. They're using it to make army units. Puck's army is pretty scary considering it's only gateway army. Because right now Scarlet is stuck with uh, having Roachling for the majority part of this army. Well, good, oh contested. good, Time Warp makes it with those force fields. That catches the majority of the roaches uh, and the queen. But the roaches Puck, are flipping out, they're not even yeah. attacking, okay, now they're attacking. Puck will back with what he can, does get fungal with the majority of these forces. Okay. This is coming down to numbers and Scarlet is starting to beat this back. Yeah, the Mothership Core is going to go down too, so Puck's, Puck has no option but to retreat here because uh, the Time Warp as well used up all the energy, he can't recall anymore. With Ultras and Roach laying on creep, oh, and Infestors that are going to get energy again, Puck has to make a better army here. Well, he did manage to get this base up, which I do find actually quite good. Because one thing, of course, if you're going really gateway heavy, you're spending a lot of warp ends. That means a lot of money gets used up very quickly, and Puck has not really had a bank to work with so far this game. Yeah, Scarlet um, has a really strong army with Ultras versus gateway units. Puck knows this through Observer over the army. So Puck has to decide, what do I want? What kind of units should I make to beat this? It's, and for now, it's Immortals. I mean, if this was Arch Lair Tech, I think Puck could win this game. But I think yeah, it's because sure. it's... Because it's it's, she, yeah, she's on Hive. Like, it's, Blink Stalkers aren't going to cut it for much longer. No, when you get Fungoid and the Ultras and the Zerglings are close to your Stalkers, yeah. you know, it's when the Protoss player just says, oh my god, Zerg is so OP. But... Yo, I just got like Puck a... Puck is making a better army, at least, with um, Immortal Archon, which is really strong versus Ultras. Um, I kind of feel like the Immortals are just going to get abducted, though. Like, she doesn't even have to take the fight, right? Like... Yeah, well, the Vipers, luckily for Puck, are just getting started, so it'll be a bit before... Oh, I mean, Puck's going to get maxed before the fight. Hold up! Fight. This Roach run by, though. Oh, the Roach run by. Oh, the one Immortal shows up in the nick of time. Yeah, might be able to save this. Uh, Force Hill could go down as well to lock this down. Third base in a little bit of trouble. He brings back the army to deal with this. I really like that Puck didn't overdedicate to this too. Look how much he left the majority of his army here at the fourth, knowing that this was going to be yeah. the real point of contestation. Yeah, the rest of the army is a lot more mobile than the Roaches, and they're stronger too. So, time warps go down. Of course, Ultras don't give a fuck about time warps. Part of my French uh -huh. there. Uh, but the Stalkers are in this nice little choke behind the gateways. Ultras, of course, clumsy, horrible units to deal with this. Now the Immortals get in the front uh -huh. lines, and Puck should hold this. But Puck has to not... Wow, okay. what? <laughs> oh, the Ultras got blocked by Queens once more. Queens cost the game, GG. Well, no, just... Oh, no, it's, it's, it's still a scary situation to lose Ultras like this. But Scarlet's got, yeah. I feel, more leeway to lose units than Puck does right now. He just I'll... lost everything here at the third. The Roaches are still up on hold position. She's doing a tremendous amount of damage to those probes. I mean, uh, picking yeah. up well, a few so far. All the Queens and some Ultras, not worth it. That was yeah, a good one for Puck. I'd say the Queens are the worst part too, because it takes so long to get energy back up for transfuses. Yeah, the Ultras exactly. you can just remake, but... When you have 200 energy Queens with Ultras, you're smiling, you're a happy player, because it's four heals. Right, but Puck's on that same clock he was last time on Deadwing. Like, right now, okay, he's taking the ground fights, fantastic. Page to clap, but, I mean, if Scarlet gets to that point where she's got Broodlords again, Puck doesn't have the money to go for Stargates. There's no way he throws down three plus a Fleet Beacon. He can't afford it. Plain and simple. Mm, I would say this game is a lot better for Puck at this moment, just because uh, yeah, yeah. 
Raider Spire is so far away from being done. Scarlet's been mining on four bases the entire game because the fifth has been knocked down. Now the other fifth, let's say, because he's relocating, is going to get knocked down too. Right, I mean, like, Puck's in a good spot, but he's still in that same clock. Like, if he waits too long, if he can't push in to win, if the Broodlords come out. I know it's a lot of ifs, but mm -hmm. I guess, uh, as you point out, with the with the mining being disturbed, she is on a pretty low gas count. And building units like Infestors, Ultras, and Vipers all at the same time, that's going to soak up a lot of gas. It should have been Corruptors and could have been Broodlords. Yeah, well, Scarlet's plan for now, for sure, is just to defend. Maybe do a run by if possible, but you want to buy time for Vipers to... Uh, a company or for the Broodlords to come out and join the Vipers, the Ultras, the Queens, the Infestors. Puck is actually Max, so maybe he wants to make something happen here. I don't know if he needs to feel forced into this though. The Immortals on the front line is the Stalkers playing back. Oh, blinding, blinding Clouds! Cloud. Oh, Blinding Clouds gonna wreck the Immortals. They can't get any damage out here to those Ultras. And then, of course, with those Fungals, the Stalkers can't blink back. Puck loses so much of his army to this. Um, but with only a few Ultras out. You know, Scarlet does have to regroup and wait for reinforcements. Yeah, and this is a situation where I think normally in a PvZ we see the Zerg player with like a 3k bank, 4k gas type thing, but... Yeah, both uh, players once again are macroing really well, they're spending all their money. Yeah, and they're both trading really efficiently in all these trades, no one's like coming up directly ahead of the other, but... Uh, transfuses were pretty much all exhausted in that first fight, there's not really a lot left in this. As these ultras yeah. start going down, this is less and less scary to deal with. There's a lot of empty energy infestors and no energy oh, queens. Oh, it's really close. But, oh my god. Uh-oh. This base might die, because the ultra is five at a time. Not out yet. This, this base will die for sure, unless Puck just wants to chase. I like, I like that he pursued the queens instead of the drones here, too. Yeah. Getting rid of those transfuses is a big deal. For sure. Um, there, There's a few options there which Puck could have taken, like kill that base. But he can do it anyways. That's really good, so... Chasing the few uh, units, and then killing the base. Scarlet, actually Scarlet did take the other base, so uh, at least she's mining some, but back home, the main, the natural, pretty much mined out. Third's getting close. PP. Hmm, now it's uh, getting serious. Needs to gather her wits. All that dancing has exhausted her. <laughs> yeah. How can I dance in Queen if I lose? Better not lose. So. At this stage of the game, I know we're seeing a lot of Ultras. I would kind of like to see some Lings get back into this as well. With those Fungal Growths being as good as they have been, um, the damage would be really nice. Like, I'm not saying max out on Lings, obviously, but uh, still throw a little bit more into support the Ultras. Because right now, I, I really... I don't think pure Ultras with a couple of Vipers, even with good Fungals, is going to win Scarlet this game. No, Scarlet was a bit too wasteful there when doing the Rotrum by to uh, attack the fourth of Puck with the Ultras, but then lose all the Ultras, and the Queens too, upon retreat. Yeah. So I think what she should have done was just to defend on creep, because you know ultras on creep, they're fast, they can uh, get good surrounds. It's scary for Protoss or Turn to be on creep. And buy time for the Broodlords, because the Vipers are already out, you just need some Broodlords. Yeah. Just um, with how the game was going, ever since the start, uh, Puck did open for a really, really greedy Nexus gate into a 530 Nexus, which amplifies the strength of any push he does. So in the mid game, the amount of roaches Scarlet had to make really used up all the gas. Because Scarlet was on low gas for the first 12 minutes of the game. And you don't want to trade um, all your gas for uh, bad units like roaches. Or, I mean, use your I, gas and then trade armies. You know, speaking of trading armies, though, I mean, I, I just while we're at the break screen here as they resume. I mean, look at the resources lost so far this game. Look at the actual units lost this game. It's kind of insane. And I made a joke about thousands of links earlier, but I mean, half of 1,000 is 514 links have been killed so far this game. This is, uh, what, 65 minutes? I think that's too long. There you go. Five or minutes. 655 minutes. But yeah, it sucks if your hand is hurting, especially in a tournament. Cause... Yeah, those wrist problems. I mean, even just observing, I'm not even playing hardcore. I know the I know the burns. So I can imagine yeah, you playing don't wanna times worse. damage your delicate Fingers and points and your tools, man. Your tools of the trade. Yeah. Not my lucky hand. It's uh, unfortunate for that to happen anytime, but especially during a tournament, because well, you can't I mean, just call it off. Like if you're just laddering for for practice, you can be like, oh, I'll do this later. It's well, now I, or I mean, before we get too over critical, I mean. I mean, there's no, a loser's bracket, critical, there's... Don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you're right. I'm just saying, like, for Scarlet, if she loses this game because of Rister Bucket, or she's, she's up one in this best of three, there's a loser's bracket fall back in. Like, I just don't want Scarlet fans to panic because of Rister Bucket. Like, yes, it sucks 100%, but It'll hardly be bad the end of her life. loser's bracket because you have to win more games. Yeah. Which is not good if you're Rister turning. So let's hope, if you're a Scarlet fan, you, you don't... want her to win this now, so... 
Yo, focus on the game here. We see a lot of focus on trying to kill the queens, which I don't think is a bad idea. What I would like to start seeing is some more feedbacks, though. I don't. I haven't um, really been looking, but I don't think we've seen many feedbacks this oh, game. Oh, I'm faster to die for free. But right now, there's no creep spread. Scarlet is down 50 supply. I'm pretty sure when Puck decides to move in, yeah. well, Zerg tears will be shed. Ah, uh, the feedback. Uh, feedback. The feedback. feedback. Oh, I hate when that happens. Yeah, the Viper. You're just like, oh, cool. All my units ignored the one Templar that walked forward. Viper. One Templar with, let's say, 150 energy just instantly kills three of your investors with full energy. Yeah. Just like, uh, why? I like that anyway, you know, there's a lot of choice targets there, but he went for the Viper, and I like that a lot. Because the blinding cloud on that ramp before was probably what screwed him the most. Uh-huh. Well, this is going to be ugly for Zerg. Yeah. Uh, feedback's on the Queens as well, as we see go down. Feedback on that Viper. Scarlet has no, no tools to work with at this point. Sox is looking at the back lines. The Ultras are numerous. But the Immortals should be able to hold strong here against us, especially Immortals. with the Archon support. Immortals are only half the cost of Ultras in terms of food, so let's not forget. And they're really strong. Good game. Uh, GG. That was, a, that was a great game out of Puck 2 compared to the way game number one went. So we are going to get game number three, and hopefully Scarlet, you know, maybe she takes five minutes real quick. Do some stretches, whatever she needs to do, so she can be playing at her best for the last game.